welcome! This is part two of a little picture from Johanna's Christmas and today I'm going to go ahead and finish off all of the Christmas presents. So I'm not sure how long this will take us but hopefully it won't be too bad. So I'm going to continue on with a similar color palette to last time but I'll bring in a few more colors and things as well so it's not identical. So I'm looking forward to sharing this with you and we're going to be using Polychromos pencils today. I've also got my white Sakura Jelly Roll, a Derwent Drawing Chinese White and two Posca pens, one silver and one gold. So let's get started. So as usual I will be working with lots of light layers and building up my color. So if you're new to Polychromos this is a great way to start building up shadows, highlights and get a really nice sort of depth in your picture and by also erasing some of the black outlines we're really sort of softening up, up the picture and we're going to get a really nice effect. So definitely if you're new to this channel I'm hoping that you will learn some new things and especially if you need to polychromos pencils as well. I've got a bit of a highlighted area here now. I'm going to go in with my dark chrome yellow on this. It gives a really nice sort of glow to it and it works well once I blend it all together as well. It'll give like this sort of underlayer, like a warm underlayer. I'm going to add a few more layers of red on top.
Now I know I mentioned this before but I'll do it again for all those new people here. Um, for shadowing it's a great way to start up a little bit lighter to start with so don't go in like straight away with your blacks. So when you're doing shadows on like a red surface a dark brown is a really good start. So I'm going to put down this burnt umber first and then if I need to go darker I'll always cut my black off my sleeve later on. But always go in lighter than you think you're going to go and that way you still have room to go darker if you need to. But if you go in dark straight away and you're not happy with it then you're stuck with it. So go in lighter, use the browns that are a little bit softer and then build up on that afterwards. do hope you're enjoying this video if you are please consider giving it a thumbs up it really does help push the video out to a wider audience and if you've got time to leave a comment I love reading those and if you've got questions as well I'll try to answer them as good as I can if you're new here I would love to have you subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post new content which is roughly every four days
I did mention that I was going to use a gold and a silver Posca pen for this so I'm going to use a gold one now I'm going to use this for a whole lot of those little details so I'm going to use it for these little stripes here and then I'll probably bring them in for things like the little stars a bit further down um, and sort of various of those sort of little things as well so it does help especially on these little tiny stripes instead of me having to go in with several pencils to make a gold you can go in with a gold pen Posca pen like this or a gold gel pen whatever you've got on hand so when I finish with this gold I'm gonna go ahead and get my white Sakura jelly roll 05 out it's a very fine nibbed a pen and it works perfectly to go over these black outlines and soften them down a bit so they don't as you can see it doesn't put down a huge amount of color or white it's just enough to sort of soften up the black outline you can still sometimes see it through a little bit but it's enough that you really give the items that you coloring like a really nice soft finish without those harsh edges and now I can go in with my black and just finalize those shadows so I'm just going in wherever I want that very dark parts to be so usually sort of alongside wherever something is overlapping something else I'll go in there and just go as close as I can to sort of the other item because obviously we still have that brown layer underneath so that will give that sort of soft blend out if you still need to blend a little bit you can still go over the top I would probably go over the top with a red tone I think just to sort of blend it in with the rest of the red if you wanted a soft blend and not a harsh straight line
little bit of this light magenta to the highlighted areas on top of the violet here. I find this one works really well on top of the violet. It just gives a little bit of a shine of something else and it's a nice sort of layering thing just to play on the colors a little bit and just prevent it being flat and boring. So for the shadows on this little Christmas gift, I'm going to go ahead and use some dark indigo. It's a great one to use on top of things like your purples and your violets, as well as on top of your greens actually. So instead of using my browns like I did on the red, I'm going in with a very dark blue tone. And again, you can then go over it with black later on if you want it even that darker. thought I'd show you a few different ways of doing gold, different gold tones today. So this here little bow, I'm going to go in with my burnt ochre to start with instead of like a yellow tone and that will just sort of darken up and I don't know, soften up your gold tones a little bit. I really like this burnt ochre, it does work a really nice, it gives a really nice underlay for those gold tones you can always go in with like a more yellow ochre or like naples yellow afterwards but by having that ochre undertone with the burnt ochre it's just prevents it from being like really yellow and i quite like that so go in with some brown tones for gold and start experiment a little bit and see which ones you like the best
So now that I've got most of my shadows mapped out with slightly lighter colours, I can go in with my black and just really darken up the areas that I want really, really shadowy. This will just help make this bow pop a little bit and make it look like a standout, especially when we go in later on with that Sakura Jelly Roll to erase those, especially those top lines I want to erase and then I have those those lines where I have black lined up against it, you don't really necessarily have to erase those because you obviously have, that will work as a bit of a shadow, but it's going to really make this pop when I have the shadow underneath and then have the highlighted area up the top.
for the details on this little Christmas present, I'm gonna go in and do those little looks like little snowflakes kind of thing with my white Posca, and then I'm gonna do the stripes with my silver Posca pen.
so I mentioned using dark indigo as shadow for greens but you can also use the Payne's grey because it has a blue undertone to it so it works out really well on top of your cold colours. So for this little bow here, I'm going to go in gold tones as well, but I'm having a more of a yellow base to it. I'm starting with my Naples yellow, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my sort of ochre and brown tones on top of that. And you can really see the difference between this bow and the one that we did previously on the purple gift as well and you can see that while some of the colors are the same because we have different undertones it really changes up the way that gold shows up
Now this little gift is fairly sort of squeezed in behind a lot of other presents so I'm going to go in fairly early and start darkening things up. I do want it sort of fairly dark and blend it in a little bit so I'm just going to go in now straight away with the burnt umber just to darken things up. And then later on we'll probably add in some black tones. I will still blend out and probably add maybe some more red tones I think. But I just want to make sure that we get this sort of dark because it's sitting behind so many things. There are so many different shades of reds and oranges here. I found this um, light cadmium red is really good. It is very, very close to being an orange, but it's not quite. So it's going to work out well just to sort of make this red slightly different to some of the other red Christmas gifts that we got up here. And that way they don't all look completely the same. And that way you have some other combinations of red that you can try out as well.
So this particular parcel is a little bit similar to that green one we did in the last episode with the little leaves on it. Just in the fact that it doesn't have any bows or anything attached to this gift to make to make it sort of pop or stand out. So I'm going to have to make sure that I add in a lot of shadows, a lot of blending and everything just on the parcel by itself. And then I'm going to think, I think I'm going to go in with my white Posca pen for those little swirls. Just something different, just to give a little bit more texture and just have something happening really. Just gonna go back in with my light ultramarine and just blend this out a little bit more I'm still not going crazy hard and then we're gonna go in and get those white details on it
So as I mentioned before, even though I'm using some of the same base colors for these presents, I am still trying to change up the color combinations a little bit just to have some sort of little tiny differences here. So in this one here, I want to add in some little bit more of the blue violets and maybe the Delft blues. And then I'm wondering if I might just go in with quite a fair bit of the crimson in the center of this one, just to sort of have a bit more of a play on the colors. And I think that's going to look really nice, especially up against, we have that sort of slightly darker purple, purpley violet one, the long one from last episode, as well as that little one. So I think that's going to just make it different enough that it's not exactly the same.
just going to use this light magenta on these lighter highlights just to kind of blend them out a little bit without darkening it up too much and then I'm going to go in with my black and just really start adding in some more shadows.
to do these little snowflakes with my white Posca pen and then I'll probably add in some little sort of random dots here and there as well just to break it up a little bit and just create just like a funny effect on it. Just I haven't put any shadows underneath the gift tag and that little flower so I'm going to just go ahead and do that now and you'll see straight away how much more it brings out that tag so it really looks like it's kind of popping out a little bit more and isn't just a part of the paper. So for this little package that's sort of poking out on the side here, I thought I'd go in with maybe some green and red stripes and then I'm thinking my gold Posca pen again, I think just for the little tiny stripes and the little dots.
I want to do this gift here as a gold wrapper and I'm going to have those hollow leaves being sort of printed on the paper. So I'm not going to go too crazy with shading those. I'm not going to put any shadows around them just because I want it to look like it's completely flat, printed on and I'll just add a little bit of tiny sort of shadows on the actual leaves themselves but not too much because usually they're not super complicated the sort of the printed papers they're pretty simple so we're just going to leave it fairly simple for this and still get a really nice result so I'll still go in I think and just remove the most of the black outlines for those and that will just look like it's sort of properly printed in and not sort of drawn onto the paper.
as I mentioned, I don't want the shadows on the sleeves to be too dark. Don't want it too complicated, but I'm just going to go in with a tiny bit of dark indigo, just sort of at the very sort of center of the whole holy thing here. So close to the berries, I'm just going to go in and just darken it up just a tiny little bit. And I think that's going to be it for what I'm doing on those. And then I'll go ahead and just erase those black outlines and it will look like it's printed on.
just noticed that just next to this little gift is like that purple gift is actually continuing on down so I'm just gonna I'll just erase this line while I'm at it and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put in all of those blue violets and dark blue tones just to kind of make it match with the parcel above it and that way it will just look like it's sort of sitting in behind because it's so far behind there anyway it's going to be really shaded so I'm just going in with really dark tones I'm not worrying too much about highlights with this one it's going to be pretty dark anyway Just finishing up these little shadows here and then we are pretty much done I think. I think we've done really well getting all of those Christmas presents done. So here you go, here is the final reveal of the presents. I'm really happy with how they turned out. We got a lot of depth into them considering they're all really flat presents that didn't have any really any angles or anything like that drawn into them they're all sort of flat and square so i'm really happy with the effects we've been able to add in there so i hope you've had fun following along next time we'll tackle the sleigh so thank you so much for watching with me today i really appreciate you being there i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you again next time